I emailed everyone out two files tonight, a Coca-Cola bottle and a Coca-Cola logo. So we're gonna bring those in. And what we're gonna do tonight, we're going to work on contrasting motion, uh, like contrasting motion, counter motion, whatever you wanna call it. You'll see, because motion design is all about show, don't tell. And if you need help, you can just go file, import file to bring in those files, or you could double click in the project panel where it's empty to bring them in. Or you can just go to your finder, click and drag them into the project panel. Yeah, so the click and drag would end up looking like this, uh, just grabbing the art, click, drag, and put in the project panel. So that's the three ways you can bring it in. And while you're all downloading, I'm gonna create my new composition by clicking the new comp button right next to the rocket ship. And as always, it's gonna be 1920 by 1080 because everything due in this class is 2K. And the frame rate, I'm gonna use the drop down menu, change that to 24. And our duration, I'm gonna make 10 seconds. And a reminder about time code, it goes hours, minutes, seconds, frames. So you need to go 10 period zero zero for 10 seconds. Otherwise you'll get 10 frames if you just type in 10. I'm gonna click the OK button. All right, so I'm gonna bring in my soda bottle just by clicking and dragging. And it is way too small. So I hit the S key to get scale and I'm gonna scale it up. Right here is my title safe. Looks like a little crosshair. I'm sitting pretty. The first line, reminder, is your action safe. The second line is your title safe. So this is sitting good. It's got some headroom and it's, you know, eating up a large amount of real estate. The client would be happy. Any questions about any of that? Really? Hmm. Well, I think it's because you must have done something to it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, let me test this out. Okay, so toggle switches and modes right here. These are my modes. I'm clicking toggle switches and modes. These are my switches. I'm gonna show you something new tonight. See this right here, this diagonal? This is the aliasing for when you scale stuff up. So if I click that, now I've got a nice smooth curve. That might help your upscaling of that image. And if it didn't, just lie to me so I feel better about myself. In switches, you know, toggle switches and modes. Here's your modes. So in switches, what he had was this diagonal line. Now that's medium quality. If you click and get this curve, you'll get better quality upscaling. His may have even been this jagged line. Like that's the worst quality. Like, so that's good quality. And then this just really helps when you upscale images. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have liquid fill up and reveal the Coca-Cola can, okay? Uh, Coca-Cola bottle. So. With nothing selected, I'm just gonna draw a rectangle. My rectangle is going to be wider than the bottle and taller than the bottle. It has to be bigger because once we start displacing it, it's gonna lose some of the height and the width around the edges, okay? Make sense to everyone? So we're gonna make it a little bigger. And I'm gonna turn off my stroke by clicking on the word stroke, my red cross out, hit okay. My fill color, I'm gonna make kind of soda color look. Boom, and I'm done. I'm just making it this so it's got some contrast and you can see it, you know what I mean? All right, make sure your anchor point's in the center and the fast shortcut for that is with your layer you want, the anchor point in the center, just hold down the command key and double click on your pan behind tool to snap it to the center. I'm gonna hit save because as we all know, Adobe is garbage and it crashes a lot. So it's gonna cause week 06, B, because this is the second lecture. And as always, I will send this file out to everyone to have for reference. Everyone with me so far? All right, you good, Shalia? Okay, there's the chat. Yes, perfect. All right, everything's working fine. Now I wanna show everybody something. I'm gonna type in turbulent displace. And I'm gonna throw the turbulent displace effect on my shape layer. And I'm gonna click off it. I'm gonna hit the space bar. So what this did, it distressed my shape, but it's not animated. Can everybody see that? I grabbed turbulent displace, 
and I dragged it onto my shape layer. And I didn't change any of the settings. It's just the default settings. We didn't animate anything. There's no keyframing done here, okay? Watch what happens. Everyone looking? Here we go. This will knock your socks off. Watch this shape layer, you ready? All I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click, I'm gonna drag it around the screen. Look what's happening. When you put Turbulent Displace on a layer and you move that layer, it will create displacement without keyframes. Got it? So think of an invisible displacement map over the whole screen so that as you move that shape, it's going through that displacement map. Kind of like we did with your film grain. Make sense? So we don't really need to keyframe this as we animate the liquid coming up, all right? Because the displacement's gonna do it for us as it moves. The liquid will fill up from the bottom. So we're gonna animate this position from the bottom up to the screen, okay? So I'm gonna move my playhead to where I want the motion to start. I'll call this a uh, soda liquid. I just hit the enter key to rename the layer. And I'm gonna hit the P key for position, to save space. And I'm gonna wait right there. And everyone, when you're ready, just say, yeah. All right, wow, you're fast. See, now you're starting to become intermediate motion designers. You're getting quicker and I can talk about something. You go, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know what a trim path is. I'm not some, you know, new person at this. I'm on week six. All right, so we got the playhead where we want. We got the anchor point where we want. We know what we want to do. Now we just got to execute it. I'm going to click the stopwatch for position to get my first keyframe. And a reminder, you need a minimum of two keyframes to do anything when you're keyframe animating, and they have to be at least one frame apart. The closer they are together, the faster the change will happen. The further apart they are, the slower the change will happen. So I want this to go maybe three and a half seconds. Let's do four seconds because I'm feeling daring. So you move the playhead to where you want your change to happen, and you make that change. I could click and drag over the numbers, I can click and type in those numbers, or I could just use my selection arrow and click and drag. Make sure you hold down the shift key while you do it to snap it straight up and down. I just want this liquid to cover the soda bottle. So as it goes up, I wanna make sure it does not go past the bottom. Like such. So I'm gonna easy ease these. I could box select by clicking and dragging, or I could click the word position to select all the keyframes for that watch, the stopwatch. So I'm gonna hover over one of the keyframes, right click, and here we gotta hold down the control key because there's no two key mouse thing. So I held down control or right click. I'm gonna to go to keyframe assistant, easy ease. Now we've got our eased keyframes. They're still selected. I can go into my speed graph. Just a reminder, if you're seeing this, this is the value graph. The value is how much is changing, how much position, how much rotation, how much scale. We want the speed graph to change the velocity in and out of these keyframes. So I'm gonna click my expand button to expand my graph to view. And I wanna slow it down as it gets to the end. So this is the end. I'm gonna drag away from it. You grab the influence handle. You do not want the square to move up or down. And I'm gonna go a little slower out of the beginning just to make it interesting. So it's going to slow and then speed up. This is my maximum velocity right there. And that's gonna go extremely slow to the end. And you click the graph editor button to get out of the graph editor. This is your zoom in and out of your timeline. And I'm gonna preview my motion by hitting the start, not the start, what's it called, the space bar. Okay. I'm gonna hit save. Here's where we can fine tune our displacement. If I increase the size or decrease the size, I'm gonna decrease the size. What was I at? I was at 100. I'm gonna bring it down to 65. And now I'm gonna see what that does. See, now I've got more of the liquid happening inside the bottle. Now I'm gonna increase my amount now I'm going to decrease my amount. Nah, that's, it wasn't 50. I'm going to split the difference, go about 30, and take a look at it now. Okay, let's make it a little bit more. 
Let's try 59. Yeah, all right, I'm happy with that. And then as always, there's drop down that we could try. I'm gonna try, ooh, okay. Let's try something special. Let's try horizontal displacement. No, I'm gonna try vertical displacement just for the fun of it. Nope. Let's see cross displacement. Nope. I'm going to try bulge just for the fun of it. That's a little better. That's pretty interesting. Unexpected. All right. Lastly, I'm going to try the complexity. If I increase the complexity, I should get more edges. Ooh, boy, it's getting really wild on the side. No, I'm not a fan of that. So I'm going to hit undo and stay at one. All right. Everyone good? All right, so we got our main motion. It's going from side to side. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna hit save, we're basically done, but lab time's about kicking it up a notch, even though this is lecture time. So I'm gonna duplicate that layer of the solid by hitting Command D. Oops, no. See, I duplicated the effect. It's where you are selected, so now I can tell them in my timeline because the timeline's blue. That's lit up. Now when I hit Control or Command D, there we go, Liquid 2, perfect. Now what I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna make it a little brighter. So it's like a highlight, okay? And just a quick reminder with the color grid, going from up to down, you're going from light to dark, going from left to right, you're going from desaturated to saturated. And then along your hue, you are changing where you are on the color wheel. So I'm going to warm that up a little bit as well. You could always do your hue, saturation, and brightness rather than navigating the color grid if that's easier for you. When you've got a complementary color to be the highlight, just let me know. And what I'm going to do is I want this to go in the opposite direction, contrasting motion. So I'm going to right click on that layer. And here I got to hold down control. Go to my transform. I'm going to flip horizontal. And I'm also going to put this below so that the darker liquid is on top. I'm going to slide my darker liquid like one or two frames down the timeline. I want you to notice that when I did that, I've got the black selection arrow. That means I'm grabbing the whole layer. If I go to the edge, I've got the double selection head. That means I'm going to change the in point or the out point for that layer. If I hit U, you see my keyframe didn't move, just the in point. So be careful. This will move just your in point or out point. This will slide the whole layer. All right, let's move forward a little bit and see what happens. Now, see, look, those two frames, see how now I've got that nice highlight on top? Two frames might be too many. I'll move it back a frame. Oh, that was three frames. Okay, let's try one frame. Yeah, one's doing pretty good. See that? Boom, and they both cover the bottle. Who wants to tell me the golden rule of mats? A mat is how many layers revealing how many layers? Exactly, one layer revealing one layer. Why can we not use these liquids yet as an alpha mat? Yep. You're already one step ahead of me, yeah. If I pre-compose these together, we can use the bottle as an alpha mat. So I'm gonna put the bottle on the top. So bottle's on top of my layer stack and I need to pre-compose the two liquids. So I select them both, right click. In here, we gotta hold down control when we do that. And it's pre-composed right there. Really? Hmm, let me take a look at that. Let me check mine. Not oh, mine's transparent. You grabbed uh, the soda bottle. Okay, let me take a look. Yeah, no problem at all. Like I said, the second you have a question, ask, because I don't want anyone getting lost. Motion design to me is very fun. I love doing it. I love animation. So I want people to be relaxed. You'll learn better. Than me. You know what I mean? Ask away. That's what I'm here for. Remember, I built padding into this course so that you can stop me anytime you need to ask a question. So I love 
helping out. All right, bottles on top, because that's the shape we're gonna use to reveal. We pre-composed our, uh, our two shape layers together. So now I'm in my switches. I need to go to my modes. I click toggle switches and modes. Here's what's gonna be revealed. That's the shape that's got the alpha. So I go to what's gonna be revealed over to my track mat column and I'm gonna choose alpha mat. So now when I hit the space bar to preview it, there's our liquid filling up the soda bottle. I'm gonna hit save. Everyone good so far? So you got the liquid pre-composed, right? Okay, liquid's pre-composed, soda bottle's on top. You gotta be in your modes. Are you in modes? Perfect. The liquid that's gonna be revealed, select it, and then go over to your track mat column and choose alpha mat. And then when you hit the space bar, the liquid should fill up the bottle. All right, perfect. You good, Chris? All right, excellent. So it wouldn't be a Coca-Cola commercial without their logo. So I'm gonna drag the logo into our timeline and then hit save. I don't know if you guys can see this. I can see it. The logo is a little bigger than the bottle. So I'm gonna hit S for scale with that layer selected. I'm gonna scale it down so it fits on the bottle. And then I'm gonna position it a little bit so it looks centered. We've got two options. We could make an alpha mat and have the logo revealed as the liquid's pouring up. Or have it, you'll see what we're gonna do. I'm going to go to right about where the liquid would start hitting the logo, okay? So it's just a little below it. I'll go like one more frame, yeah, right there. That's what I'm gonna do, okay? And I've got my position stopwatch ready. So I'm gonna click the word position to, uh, I mean the stopwatch to activate it. And I'm gonna go forward to about here and click the diamond button. So it's the same keyframe as the one before it. There's no change, all right? I'm doing this so I can work backwards. When you work backwards, you keep your layout. You know what I mean? You can animate forward, you can animate backwards. But when you animate backwards, that's because I want this to be here. So I just click my previous button right here. And I'm gonna have this come in off the right side of the bottle, like this, okay? So it's coming in from the right as the liquid's filling the bottle. Can everyone see that? Okay. So I'm just gonna select my keyframes, hover over, right click. I gotta hold down the control key here. Keyframe assistant, easy ease, and I'm just gonna keep them Ooh, that is way fast. Let me make it a little slower. And I'm going to slow that out of the end keyframe. That's a little, still a little too fast. So that's a little better. I'm happy with that. Let me drag it one more frame further apart. Okay, I'm happy. I'm gonna hit save. Okay, cool. And then just time it so you like the way the logo's coming in off the side bottle. This is thinking as a motion designer, okay? You guys all set? If I use the bottle shape as an alpha mat for the text, it'll follow the shape of the bottle. Everyone got that? We've got the liquid animating into the bottle, okay? So if the client ever comes back and says, oh, I want that logo to come in a little sooner, if we do just the bottle, it'll look weird if the liquid isn't there and it's popping up. Does everyone understand that? So what we're going to do, we're going to grab the bottle and the liquid, and who guesses what the next step is? Exactly. Pre-compose, turn them into one layer. So I'm going to hold down Control, or you could right-click. We're going to go to pre-compose, and we'll call this uh, liquid bottle reveal. And remember, you've got to click move all attributes and it has to highlight blue. That default gray does not mean it's on. It has to light up blue and then you click okay. Everyone good with that? Just a reminder, the logo should be underneath 
because you put a mask over your face. So, you know, like a Halloween mask, it goes over your face. So what's being revealed is below. So all we do with that logo selected, we go over to our track mat, choose alpha mat. And now we see that. Now, what's the one more step I got to do to get this to work again? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we had that with your thing. You got to duplicate the alpha mat because it's invisible once we turn it into that alpha mat. So we duplicate it. Then we click the eyeball icon. Now we see the original artwork plus have it as an alpha mat. And I'm going to hit save. But there's one thing wrong with this. It has to do with the artwork I imported. Has anyone ever seen a Coca-Cola bottle that looked like that? What's normally going to happen with their logo if it was clear on a bottle? Well, we could add bubbles, but I'm, I'm talking about the color of the logo. If I get a fill effect, now you'll see. I'm just going to drag the fill effect onto the logo. Right here, I can set a color. I'm going to choose white. That's normally what the bottle would look like if it was clear. You know what I mean? It would not be red. So now we've got everything working and that. All right, I'm gonna hit save. There is CC bubbles. So what you guys, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new solid. Okay, throw CC bubbles on it. Let's take a look. We could add that to the background for some fun, but uh, let's see, bubble size, I'm definitely gonna shrink down, that's for sure. Bubble amount, I'm gonna increase. Bubble speed, I'm going to increase. Let's do it as liquid. We could fade inwards. Yeah, I'm happy with that. What would fade outwards look like? New. No, I'm going to do fade inwards. That. All right. So there's our bubbles. And I could just duplicate that liquid reveal. And I'm gonna put my bubble layer on the very bottom. Well, just above that. And I'll use this as an alpha mat above it. So now there's just bubbles in my bottle, like such. And then if I want, you know, I can fine tune them right here. Up the speed some more. that and if I want to take it up a notch even more I can change the color of them let's try curves just for the fun of it I'm going to throw curves on that bubble layer I'm going to name it so I know what it is there's my bubbles let's lighten them jumping out a little too much so I'm gonna try blending mode let's just try luminosity let's try Ooh, that's pretty interesting hard mix pretty fun all right and I'm gonna scale my bubble layer down a little bit just because the bubbles are still a little too big I'm having fun with that there we go Ta-da. That's it for tonight. Just thinking through a thought and doing a little bit more advanced thinking with alpha mats. You know, tying the liquid to the shape of the bottle and creating another alpha mat off of that gives us a far more powerful alpha mat for using with the bubbles so that they don't get ahead of the liquid. Like such. The, okay, so Shalia was saying the label... Yes, the label is usually red, but the text on it is usually white. So if they had a clear bottle, they'd usually put white ink on it so that you could see it with the soda. Like such. And like we said, we could dial on the color, but I just wanted some contrast to show you this. All right, excellent. Great job. And I will send this out to the class. Don't forget, purge. So it's edit, purge, all memory, and disk cache. That was 46 gigs for tonight's uh, 
early lab time and lecture. So now we're gonna dive into extended lab time 